Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about SvelteKit 1.0. It is not there yet, and we're going to be highlighting how you know when it's going to hit 1.0, and we're going to take a look at some of the outstanding things that are still needing to be done and maybe where you can pitch in. Now, before we do that, let's talk about leveluptutorials.com, which is the perfect place where you can not only learn Svelte, but Keystone JS, Remix, Astro, React, uh, web components, GitHub Actions, Dino, Cypress, just an endless amount of stuff. We even have a two-parter on node authentication. Really cool. So leveluptutorials.com, we have a new tutorial series every single month, and the latest course coming to our platform this month is going to be on Supabase and Remix. That's right, it's gonna be with John Myers, and it's gonna be awesome. So. Okay, so SvelteKit 1.0, where can you go to figure out all about SvelteKit 1.0? Well, if you're on SvelteKit's GitHub page, typically GitHub pages, what they do is if you go into issues, you can see the milestones tab in here. Now, granted, Svelte has some pinned issues, help getting to 1.0 and SvelteKit 1.0 release blockers in Vite. So this is obviously the best place to start. But if, if this didn't have that, one of the better places to go would be to go to milestones and then you could go to 1.0 or whatever that milestone is and you could start to look at it. So from here, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of issues. Now, because I've already looked at some of this stuff, I, I kind of know exactly the lay of the land here. And really where you'll want to start is this help getting to 1.0 if you're interested in helping. If you're just interested in perusing and maybe understanding the status of SvelteKit, uh, the milestones is a good place to look. But if you're looking at how you can help, uh, this post really tells you a good way. Uh, you're going to want to look for the help wanted label on things. And if you were to head to the 1.0 milestone, you can see a handful of them have help wanted, help wanted. Um, there's some documentation things in here if you're not confident in your code skills, if you want to help that way, if you want to build example apps, that's another thing. If you want to make YouTube videos about SvelteKit, that probably helps too, right? Um, either way, there's a lot of stuff in here that you could probably take a look at. And while this does seem like a lot of stuff, I would imagine not all of these are going to be in 1.0. Maybe these are going to be things that they want to be in 1.0. But also, some of these might not even be big things, and some of these might already have PRs that are already on the way or nearing complete. And some of them are big changes. Rename SRC routes to SRC app. Uh, that's a big change, right? Now, granted, that's like a, you're just changing the file folder. Um, but I've come come to view that routes is a suboptimal naming. It downplays the centrality of that folder, makes you think about routing, right? So this is a breaking change that may, may or may not make it in. Who knows, right? There's a lot of changes. And that's one thing to be cognizant of if you're considering SvelteKit for your application. In fact, I saw on Reddit a post that was like, SvelteKit is buggy. They changed this and it had a breaking change and I will not use it anymore because of that. Well, you got to understand that we're using SvelteKit in production to great success. We love using it. I adore using SvelteKit, right? You got to understand that this is a pre 1.0 library and they're going to make sure that things are perfect for that 1.0 because after you hit that 1.0, you have something called semantic versioning, right? Where with semantic versioning, if you make a breaking change to the API, as in changing the routes folder to app, then you have to call it 2.0, right? And that actually is really difficult for a lot of people to upgrade. And then you're kind of segmenting your user bases. It's like, these are the types of things that they want to get figured out and perfected and perf just really on top of it before they get to version one. So that way they don't have to do breaking changes later. So if you are interested in helping, this is the perfect place to check out help getting to 1.0. Uh, take a look at some of these help wanted ones. Take a look at this 1.0 milestone. And more importantly, hop on the Discord and just start chatting with people. If you are interested in taking on one of these help wanted ones, and maybe there's nobody on it, and Maybe you have the perfect opportunity to dive into this thing. And maybe you can hop into the Discord and ask questions or or uh, get some help or, or really just, you know, ping your ideas off of people. Either way, these are a great place to look. Um, one thing that I really love about this repo in general is they seem to do issues really well 
where they're creating lots of issues for any ideas that they're having. They're tracking them, they're discussing them. It's all out in the open and it's all public and you can dive in here and see what may be coming or not coming to Svelte. Now, another really interesting place to look in here is the post 1.0 milestone. The post 1.0 milestone is actually uh, the place to go for maybe like future kind of stuff, stuff that uh, like image processing, right? Is that is that possible to come to Svelkit? Uh, that would be really neat, right? Because a lot of these other libraries do have image processing baked in. Now, granted, that's a whole thing, but um, it's pretty cool, right? Uh, Rich wants more examples, right? More examples. That's something you could work on. Either way, um, I think milestones, taking a look at these issues and having a handle on this and then discussing with the community in Discord or in the GitHub issues or whatever is the best way that you can contribute to working on Svelte. Now, I'm not an, I'm not a, a Svelte contributor really beyond these videos. I just flat out don't have the time for it beyond uh, using it, testing it, and, and using it in production, right? So uh, I can certainly understand if you don't either. Um, and maybe you just want to go ahead and look at things. Now, another thing you could do is always head to these issues, find an issue of particular importance to yourself and subscribe to it and just watch for it. Be, be aware, uh, know what's going on. Svelte kit uh, is still early on, right? It's usable in production. That doesn't mean there won't be breaking changes. So as long as you're aware of all of those things, you can use Svelte kit in production and be super excited about it while keeping an eye on everything that's coming down the pipeline. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this weekly Svelte. In the next one, we're gonna be talking more practical code stuff, doing more React to Svelte code conversions and all sorts of things. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.